Hey guys, welcome back to another Small Engines Questions and Answers and most questions that will be answered today will be on snowblowers. That's because here in Canada it's the start of our winter. And I also want to welcome all my new subscribers to my channel. And I want to start off by thanking YouTuber Kevin Watson for making and sending me this Tecumseh carburetor tool holster. He did a really nice job on this. It's all handmade. It's made of leather. You can stick your carburetor tool in here and keep it nice and safe. It is a bit stiff putting the tool in right now, but I'm sure it's going to get easier with time. By the way guys, this is for Tecumseh carburetor tool number 670377. And there is a link underneath today's video to where you can buy one of these tools online. Now if you're interested in getting one of these, just contact him. I'm not sure if he sells them, but I will put a link to his channel underneath the video today. So again, thanks to Kevin for this nice Tecumseh carburetor tool case. And there's been a lot of other YouTubers who've been generous with me and I want to send a special thank you to you guys as well. A question I got from a YouTuber a little while back is, can I install a fuel filter on a snowblower? Well, the answer is yes, you can, but there already is somewhat of a filter inside your fuel tank usually. For example, on these Tecumseh engines here, there's a screen over the connector on the fuel tank where the fuel goes out. So basically inside the tank here, there's a screen that will stop major dirt from getting into your fuel system. However, you can install a small filter like this between the line over here. It's not going to hurt anything and it's just going to add you extra protection. And it would be the same thing for these Briggs and Stratton engines on snowblowers as well. There's usually a screen in the tank to stop any major dirt from getting into your carburetor. However, on this engine here, I've had to install an inline filter in behind over here where the fuel line is because somebody had some kind of sawdust in their gas and it was getting through the original filter in the tank and into the carburetor. And because of that, I ended up installing a secondary filter in between the tank and the carb and the problem stopped. And on some of the MTD snowblowers with a power more engine, this is the kind of filter you're going to have on the tank. You can actually unscrew it from the tank. And you can see there's a small screen here. Obviously this one is very dirty. That's because the tank I took this filter off was very rusty. This is just to give you an idea that there is already some kind of fuel filter system on your snowblower. However, what I'm going to highly recommend you install on your snowblower engine is install a fuel shutoff valve like this in the fuel line. This way here when you're done using your snowblower for a long period of time, you can turn it off, run the engine dry, and this will prevent gas from sitting in the carburetor and going bad on you. And it's very handy if you need to do carburetor work because you can just turn the valve off when you disconnect the fuel line. Now another question a YouTuber asked me is, why should I disconnect the spark plug when I turn the augers on my snowblower? Well the simple reason for that is in case that it would somehow make the engine kick or backfire or even start. By having the spark plug disconnected, you totally eliminate that risk. Sometimes people reach down inside their snowblower over here and turn the impeller by hand. And if for some reason that happens to make the engine turn over, it could actually start the engine or make it kick back and you could crush your hand in there. That's why I try to mention in all my videos that I work on snowblowers or any piece of equipment to disconnect the spark plug boot before you perform any work on it. So basically my advice is better to be safe than sorry. In my next question a YouTuber asked me if he can adjust the carburetor on his snowblower even if the choke is on. Well my answer to that is definitely not. You should not adjust your carburetor with the choke on. It has to be in the off or open position to be properly adjusted. Now here's an adjustable Tecumseh snowblower carburetor. Here's the choke part. When you adjust your carburetor, you want to make sure it's in the off position or open position as I mentioned. When I say open, this is what I mean. When it's closed, it's like this or in the on position. If you try to adjust your carb with the choke on like this, it's going to run very rich. You're never going to be able to adjust it properly for it to rev at the RPMs that it should. That's why you should not try adjusting your carburetor with the choke on. Now this principle will apply to any outdoor equipment that has an adjustable carburetor. Another question I got from a YouTuber in regards to snowblowers is, does it matter if the belt cover is on the snowblower? Well my answer to that is yes, on some snowblowers the belt guard helps to keep the belts on the pulleys. So if you don't have the belt guard on some snowblowers, the belts may come off the pulleys 
Also, if you do not have the belt guard, it is a safety hazard because if a belt breaks, it could hit you right in the face. For example, on this belt cover, which comes from an MTD snowblower, it does act to keep the belts on the pulleys. And you can see here where the belts actually rub on the cover. It's actually a sacrificial part. You just put it on when it's wore out, you replace it. They're usually under $20, so it's not a big expense, and these are readily available. Now, if you have an older snowblower, it may be harder to find the exact replacement cover, though. Another question I received the other day is, can I reuse this shaft with the worm gear here with this damage? Well, the answer to that is no, because you're going to end up damaging the other gear in the gearbox. And this is the gear here that I'm talking about, that if you just replace this gear, and you didn't replace the shaft with the worm gear damage like this, you're going to end up damaging this gear. Now the worm gear I just showed you is at the end of the shaft here of the impeller. It drives the whole auger system on a snowblower. So you're better off to just buy all new parts and replace it or try to find a good used auger system like this one and just do a complete swap. Now what I've done in the past is filed the worm gear here to make it nice and smooth like it should be over here and it worked perfectly. However, it's going to take a lot of patience and you're going to need the right tools to do this. But I would only do that if I really had to. It's always better to get new parts and do the job properly. Another question somebody asked me about their snowblower is, is it normal that when I engage the augers that the engine RPM goes down? Well, that's completely normal because you're putting a load on the engine, so obviously the RPMs are going to go down when you do that. And it will go down even more if you go into deeper snow. However, the governor may compensate, so you may hear the engine rev up a bit when you go through deep snow. That's perfectly normal. You just don't want your engine to go down too much. Also, you don't want your engine to be revving too high as well when there's no load on the engine. And I'll just give you a quick overview of this larger Troy built snowblower. It's a 45 inch. And it's got a Tecumseh 13 horsepower overhead valve. We didn't really see these engines around for too long, but they are a lot smoother than the flatheads. And this blower here has four wheels. And it's basically the same console as your average MTD snowblower. This blower here came in the shop and the drive wasn't working, so it was pretty heavy to move around. Now obviously I would only suggest getting a large blower like this if you were doing a large driveway or a parking lot. And here's a quick view at the augers here in the front. And I'll finish off the video today with a question I often get from people in general, and that is what kind of fuel should I use in my snowblower? I highly recommend that you use premium gasoline, which is 91 octane or more. But the most important thing is to make sure that there is no ethanol in the fuel you're buying. Now, I've mentioned this before in many videos. Here in Canada, you can buy premium gas at Canadian Tire and Shell, which does not have ethanol in it. That's the only fuel I buy for all my small motors. If you buy the cheap gas with the ethanol and you don't use your equipment often, you may find that there's going to be water droplets in the bottom of the fuel tank or in your carburetor. And what that is, is the ethanol separating from the fuel. It may be slightly more expensive to buy premium gas for your small motors, but in the long run, you're going to get your money back tenfold. So that'll be it for today's video, guys. Make sure to follow me on Facebook, Google Plus, and Twitter, and have yourselves a great day.